Okay guys, um, this is part two of my video that uh, I posted, I think about a month ago. Uh, I was planning on getting the second part, I mean I'd filmed it all together. I was planning on getting the second part onto YouTube not too long after the first one. But uh, different things came up and then uh, <laughs> when I went and posted I have no clue what happened to that video as far as uh, I mean, it, it was just so messed up that, uh, you know, I got about maybe a third of the way through the video and it just froze up. You can still hear the sound, but the picture was shot. So, that being said, this is kind of a revised edition. Uh, what you're looking at here is my work desk. I don't think I've posted this on YouTube. I, I know I have posted pictures. But, um... Just to give you a brief tour around the layout, uh, that is my Campbell Soup train that uh, my friend Todd's son, Andrew, gave to me. It does not work and almost didn't keep it, but then I uh, got to thinking, you know, I need some stuff to uh, kind of put around the layout just to, you know, have on display. And I thought, what better thing to display, you know, than a train that doesn't work, at least uh, I can get some use out of it. Um, the tin in the middle, and I'm getting some glare off of it. And that's from Mr. Ian Kennedy, who had went to England with his wife here a while back. Uh, Mr. Kennedy is elected to uh, uh, stay off train life for whatever reasons. <laughs> had to dig at him, but Sir, Sir Kennedy, uh, he... Uh, he did send me this. It did have what the English call biscuits, or what we over here call cookies, and uh, they were quite delicious, kind of shortbreads, but uh, the tin was so nice I didn't want to get rid of it, and after thinking about it for a while, I said, hey, knock a hole in the back of it, put a screw through it, put it on the wall, and then slide the top piece on, and voila, <laughs> so it works. Um, I'm sure some of y'all have already seen this. This is my wife's .027 scale uh, Cannonball Express. But I've got a new addition. This little Norfolk and Western boy, uh, once again, my, my buddy Todd's son gave it to me. He's kind of downsizing some things because he'll be heading off to college next month. And uh, slowly but surely, he's been kind of sending things over, such as that cross bucks there. Uh, that San Francisco streetcar there. That little train over there, which every time I look at it, kind of makes me think of Christmas. I, I guess the colors. But um, he uh, gave me those, among other things. And, uh, hey, you know... I tell you, that little sucker there, she runs. She runs real, real well and uh, kind of surprising. Um, that one, kind of jerky. It needs a lot of cleaning. And, of course, since I'm not really <laughs> using them, I don't see the, you know, the effort, putting in the effort to do so. But anyway, I digress. I'm starting to rattle again. Uh, as you can see, my paints, I won't go into a lot of detail with this, paints, glues, uh, drafting instruments up in the corner. They are some pill boxes, old pill boxes I had, and I don't know if I can get it out here without destroying everything in here. But um, I've got axles and couplers and all kinds of good stuff in there. Uh, whenever I get a moment to settle down, I'll be putting labels on that instead of a.m. and p.m. and Wednesday through Friday or Thursday through whatever. Um, a screw drawer, probably 90 per well about 70 percent of that in there I could chunk and would probably never miss because uh, none of it's really layout related. But you know, hey, I whittled it down from three of these suckers to one, so I figure I'm doing good. And uh, I've got, of course, my drawer in here. Got files and screwdrivers and um, needle nose and so forth in there. And a lot of this y'all have seen from where I was at the house when I had the shack. 
uh, pull-out drawer that used to be for the computer keyboard. I uh, got glues and brushes and all kinds of stuff in here, exacto knives, uh, charcoal powders, etc. Uh, down in the computer door, I've got um, ballast and grass and weathering powders and staplers and all kinds of stuff up in there. Uh, there's no really rhyme or reason to this right now. Uh, one of these days I hope to get more organized, but it seems like every time I try to do so, then it's destroyed again. Uh, of course, I got my scratch building wood, basswood, and, and uh, so forth back here in this corner. And a magazine rack with either some of my more recent additions as far as magazines, uh, some of my track planning magazines, and so forth. And my Explorer, the Bible book, my Sunday school book. And, you know, come in here and shut the door and have a little uh, devotion and kind of, you know, a little downtime for myself. But anyway, um, over here, I've got the plastic bins. I'm a little vacuum cleaner there. Plastic bins over here with various uh, sundries. Um, more wood stuff, uh, some grass and so forth. Like I said, there's no rhyme or reason to this right now. I'm, right now, I'm, I'm studying on getting the track laid. Once I can get the track laid and it's just scenicing, then I can worry about starting to pull, you know, pull all this out and then getting a little more order to it. And that one don't want to come open. Um, stickers and decals and looks like some uh, um, plastic pattern sheets and so forth. So, got that under there. I uh, got a bunch of foliage that, uh, once again, my buddy Todd's son gave to me. Trees and shrubs and so forth that I can use. That he took off his old layout. Uh, wood. And... Anyway, you get the general idea. <laughs> Enough of that. I got a few kits. Got my log truck there. Only one I can find. That's discontinued and uh, I was able to find that one. Um, to fit my era, which is in the 60s and early 70s. Some train kits hidden back behind there to put together. Uh, my wife got me this calendar for Christmas. Trained calendar, which I thought was pretty nice. My welcome to the man cave sign. And then, of course, um, you've seen these in photos from the past in the Shacks photos. My CSX and my Union Pacific first aid kits that my brother-in-law, Danny who works with CSX, got me. Um, of course, they're so far out of date that <laughs> I'd be scared to use them. Then my Tabor City Lumber Company from back in the 60s where my dad used to work uh, many moons ago, <clears throat> back when I lived in Tabor City, North Carolina. And then cork and sheet, huge sheets of paper. I think that sucker's about three and a half, four feet long. Got magazines, books, books that I, I haven't read yet. Instead of trying to keep them on a bookcase in the other living room, I just keep them in here. That way I know where they're at instead of mixed up with a bunch of other books. And then the layout. Oh, wait a minute. Forgot to get the sign above the window. Uh, the railroad crossing sign. And that's pretty much it. Except, let me go back over here. Except for my Lionel train clock which once again my buddy Todd's son gave to me well I guess they both gave it to me but um no I don't have the batteries for the sound in it last thing I need that sucker going off at two three four five six o'clock in the morning you know doing the train whistles and then of course my layout now the last time I built it or last time I filmed this I had no track on it it was actually just the wood and that was it but, <laughs> I guess you'll get a little more progress report, a little more updated report. Um, that's going to be my gravel yard, my gravel pit. That wood back here, that back wall right there, that's going to have uh, 
it's going to be basically a rock facing all the way up. At least uh, the face is going to go here, so it'll be probably up to this point here. But it's going to have a rock wall, granite wall in you know, that they're going to be ripping into and so forth, and some granite along the bottom down there. And then I'm going to have tracks running along right, you know, kind of where that uh, cork is laying now. Second level down here, uh, it's going to be more of a yard. Track's going to be running all up in there. And, uh, you know, um, can store quite a bit of cars up in there once I get it laid. Track's behind here, which, uh, or will be behind here, which will be where I store my gravel pit, um, open hoppers, uh, the little shorties. I'm going to, I'm hoping to find enough of them to fit up in there. And that's where I'll keep mostly my gravel cars at. Then you've seen the oil mill that I've been working on forever, or had been working on forever back when I had the shack. It's now over here. It's glued down in place. Somewhat scenic. Um, I've still got to come in here and basically um, put some putty down and kind of smooth that out where the transition's more even. And then I've got my cars in the back, which this glare from the window is not helping. So, it probably would not help if I open it. It'd probably make it worse. But we'll see. Let's see here. And that's what, well. Anyway, you get the general idea. Um, got one area that's going to have the box cars sitting there at the, there we go. Be sitting there at the um, loading dock. I may redo that loading dock and widen it out some, but I may just put a ramp that lays down from that dock over into the box cars themselves. I haven't decided yet. Tanker car unload up there, and uh, my two tracks running out of here and connected into one. And then, of course, I got another video that uh, I just did that uh, be actually after this video that posting wise where I just had that little uh, switcher pulling those cars in the back and uh, I'll show that in a little bit but just wanted to get you an idea of where we're at but uh, I think I kind of went through all the where the actual um, you know everything's going to be in that video where I ran the train so I won't go through all that you can see my river area. I'm still trying to decide. My son came up with an idea and I kind of like it, but I'd already glued that in place down there, that culvert down there. If I can wedge that out, my son had said something about having a little waterfall. So I'm, if I can get that wedged out, I may come up in here and create a little overflow creek or something and drop down and you know and having a little more interest that way um it we'll just have to see there'll be some a little bit of hilly areas on this foam which will transist transition into a mountain that will cover that elevator right there and uh that elevator will um you know go be in the mountain itself and we'll go down to the second level and to the storage and the gravel pit area and so forth. So that is pretty much it. One thing I did want to do on this video, if I can, and um, you know what, bear with me just a second. 